Welcome to a short webinar on how you can use email within Purple Mash. We will look at how pupils can email each other within classes and groups and how as teachers you can email them and they can email you. We will look at this using a tool called To Email which sits behind the Tools button and also sits behind the Computing button. When you access To Email itself, To Emails at the beginning is the first app here and alongside this you've got To Email Settings, To Respond Creator and the two email guide. All of these can be seen when the teachers log in but not when the pupils log in. Underneath two email and the support at the top you've got online safety and two respond and famous people to respond and we'll come back to these later. I'm going to start off by looking at the two email settings that you can access as a teacher. When you open these up you'll be able to access the classes that you are associated with or set the settings up for individual children within that class. If I select the whole of Robins, I'm going to choose Key Stage 1 as their interface, leave pupil to pupil emails require approval switched on, and allow emailing within the class and to staff members, and click on Save. OK? If I click on the cross there and click on the cross there, I can now access to email. OK, what you'll see is we've got two email now in pupil mode. This is what the Key Stage 1 interface looks like. You've got a large tab for the inbox and for the address book, and you've got a, a little letter with a plus on to the right hand side that will enable you to create an email. What I'm going to do is switch the email interface into teacher mode. This will show us a bit more what the Key Stage 2 interface looks like. However, we've got the extra e safety options built in, such as awaiting approval, rejected, and reported emails. If you have pupil to pupil emails require approval switched on, the email will come up via the teacher within their class before the recipient receives it. Once the email has been sent, it will sit within this awaiting approval folder until the teacher approves it to reach the recipient. If the teacher does not approve it to reach the recipient, it will go into this rejected emails folder, as you may want to keep it for evidence and a discussion with the child. The third folder here is reported emails. When a child receives an email, they have a report button on the bottom and if they don't like the content or are uncomfortable with the content of the email, they can hit report. If I go back up to the top here, one of the e-safety features of two email is to switch user. And I can very quickly click on a user in the class and switch to be that user. Now what you can see here is there is an email from the teacher about keeping passwords safe. If the child was to read that email and they were uncomfortable with it, this button down here is the report to teacher button and that would pop it into that folder in my inbox. So we'll return now to the teacher's inbox and we'll have a look at composing an email to send to children. If I click compose at the top, it's quite clear here who, who the email is coming from and who the email is going to. And under two, I can start typing in here and Purple Mash will make a suggestion for me, which I can select. If I'd like to remove that selection, I can click on the cross. I can click on the address book here to select multiple users or filter by class or by group. I can also filter by pupils or staff. I'm going to select Robin's class and I'm going to tick everybody associated with Robin's class and add them to the to list. If I wanted to, I could also enable CC. OK, now I'm happy with that, I can start with my subject. Garden finding. Once I have written my subject and my message, and added any emojis I would like to add, I can scroll down and I can either save it to draft, attach work from Purple Mash, or attach a picture. If I am happy, I can click on send, and that will send that email to everybody in my recipients folder. It is popular when teaching email, online safety, and sometimes for great quality literacy responses, to compose an email and send it to the children as if you were a character. When I click on Compose, I can click on who the email is from and I can select one of our preset characters, perhaps the gingerbread man or the genie, depending on what book I'm reading. If a character that matches your topic or theme isn't there, then you can always create a character by clicking on Create a Character. You could pop the name of the character in here and then select Icon. Once you're happy, click on Use this character and that is the character the children will receive the email from. Once you have decided who the email is coming from, you can search and select your class. Here we go, I'm going to add them in and click on OK. 
Enter the subject. Greetings from Narnia. And pop your message in. OK. At the bottom here then, you can again save to draft, attach work, attach a picture, or simply send. Off he goes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch user, and I'm going to go in as if I'm a, cla a child in Robin's class, Ashley here. You'll see he's got an email from Mr. Tumnus. Go at greetings from Narnia. He can read the email, and he can reply to Mr. Tumnus. Mr. Tumnus has asked him what his favourite thing to eat is when sitting by a fire. So we'll put I... Let's start it properly, shall we? Dear Mr. Tumnus, I like eating sausages by the fire. From Ashley. Okay, and Ashley can send. Off he goes. I'm going to switch back now to being myself, the original user. And Ashley's reply has come to me in here. Greetings from Narnia. And this is where I can read his reply. I can also, if I scroll down, read previous emails within that conversation. And all emails sent to and fro between me and Ashley will start to appear here in a list. In addition to this, I can also click on the full conversation button to view the full conversation in speech bubbles. This is printable. Or I can close. We're going to come out of here now and we're going to have a little look at a to respond. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to admin and impersonate a pupil login. I'm going to impersonate Daniel. Now I'm logged in as Daniel, you'll notice there are a couple of alerts. And this is to do with the emails that I just sent when I was demonstrating. Daniel's been alerted that he's got two emails and he can go to to see the two emails I just sent. The one about garden findings and the greetings from Narnia. We're going to return back to to email and you'll notice underneath the application itself you've got online safety and to respond activities and famous people that I briefly mentioned earlier. I'm going to click first on this one, Little Red Helps Grandma, and you'll notice as soon as I click on it, Daniel receives an email from Little Red, Pictures for Grandma. The email is an email from Little Red containing a closed question. Hello, I wonder if you can help me. I'm going to visit my grandma today. She is in bed and not very well. This is a picture of my grandma. She is very kind. If I scroll down, I can see the picture there. I think it would make her feel better if I could take her some lovely pictures. Can you draw me a picture of someone who is very kind to you? Can you tell me about the kind things they do? Grandma would love to hear about all the kind things. It would help her feel much better. Thank you. So Daniel can click on reply at the bottom and he can start his message. Hello. Once Daniel has written his message, he could attach a picture. This is one he can import. It could be one that he's got from his computer, or it could be one that he's drawn in purple mash. Once he is finished, he can click on send. You'll notice that once Little Red has received the reply, she replies back to Daniel again, with another letter containing other closed questions, and Daniel can again reply to that message. And the conversation carries on a few times until the end of the preset messages. We are back into email now as the teacher, as opposed to being Daniel, the child in the class. And what I can do now, if I scroll down through the two respond activities, is choose one, for example this one on sport, to set as a to-do or a task for the children, meaning they won't have to navigate through Purple Mash to to email and the sport to respond to begin. Once I click set as to do, I can edit the title and description if I wish, or set the date between which this will appear in their to-do list. Once I am happy, I can click on next and select the class for which I want that to-do to be set. If I click on set to-do and close it, I'm now going to go to admin and impersonate pupil login. I'm going to select Daniel and impersonate. And now I'm here, Daniel has an alert to say he's got a new to-do or in his to-do list at the top, he's got the latest to-do. When he clicks on start, he's taken straight to his email inbox with a message from the to respond and can double click on it to begin. Going back into to email as a teacher, you've got alongside to email, to respond creator. And if the theme or topic you require isn't already listed, you can create your own. If I go into to respond creator, 
You can edit any of our existing ones. Or you can create a blank. When you create a blank, you select who the sender will be, so we'll select the genie, and the image for the to respond. We'll search for genie, and we'll select the lamp. OK, once you're happy with that, you select the subject of the first email. You write your email, and then you can select an email delay. This is the number of seconds of delay between them clicking on the to respond and the first email arriving in their inbox. For the first one, you may leave it at blank. You can then attach a piece of purple mash work or a picture. Once you are happy, you click on the plus at the top to add the next email in the thread. OK, so that's the first one we've put in. Here's the second one. You write the content of the second email, the email delay between them sending their reply to the first one and the second one coming in, attach a work or picture, and again, once you are happy, you can click on the plus and it will add the next email. When you have finished, you can save your to respond into your My Work area. We'll call it Genie to Respond and save. And once you have done that, you can set it as a to-do or a task for your children using the World button at the top, the Share button. Enter the title, Genie to Respond, help the genie escape. Once you are happy, you can set the dates for which you want it to appear for the children and then select Next to choose the class you wish to set it for. Going in to impersonate a child now as Admin Impersonate Pupil Login. We'll look at Daniel, Impersonate. Daniel's now got an alert to say he's got a new to respond, the Genie one that we've created ourselves. And under to do's, he will click on Start for Genie to respond to begin. Back in Purple Mash, I'm going to access the work area and have a look at my work. Within my work, there's a Cezanne picture that's been created in Two Painter Picture. If I wanted to use this with two email, another way I could email is using the Share button, the World button at the top. I can click on that and send directly using to email. This will open up a Compose Email window with the document that I want to send attached already. I can then compose an email in the same way I would in to email. I can start by typing the name in here, or I can access the address book by clicking on the link here. We'll send this one to Andrew. OK. I can then put the subject, my work, and a message in here, and then send. This would send Andrew my work, and it's a great way to introduce peer assessment when you're using Purple Mash. Children can create their work, they can email it to their peers, who can respond with comments. Equally, they could email that to their teacher once it's complete. So that concludes our Purple Mash webinar for today. We thank you for listening and hope you have found it useful. Please do contact us if you have any questions. We are here to help. Enjoy using Purple Mash.